views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. Let me be your lighthouse so I can show you the well, hello there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hey, this is Patty Hunter of Patty's Page. Today on my left is my special guest, Jeff Bowman. Hey. Hello, how are you? Oh, good to see you. Good to see you. I you. usually see you on 21 Alive in the Morning. Actually, you're a video journalist, aren't yes. you? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Are you originally from Fort Wayne? I grew up in a small town in uh, southern Indiana, about right. 45 minutes outside of uh, Bloomington, down Bloomington. by IU. Oh. And uh, just a, a, a small farming community where nothing famous ever happened. Except for you? Except for me. So uh, how long have you been in Fort Wayne then? I came in here in uh, June of 1981. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So I have lived here longer than I lived anywhere else. So I'm a transplanted native, if you can be one of those. Why not? You can be anything you want. I'm a transplanted native, too. I'm from Toronto, Ontario. <gasps> That's a great place to be from. Welcome to the lower 48. Lower. I've been here 20 years. My stars in the United States. Oh, my goodness. So who had influenced you while you were growing up? Uh, when, I w when I was growing up, um, you know, a farm community, um, just, just the middle of nowhere, and so you, you grew up watching uh, television and, and listening to the radio and just how exotic it was. Uh, I used to listen to WLS out of Chicago on the AM side, and just the idea that I could listen to uh, Larry Lujak or uh, John Records Landecker. I've heard of that name. Yeah, yeah, live all the way in Chicago and and it was just it was fascinating, absolutely fascinating for me to listen to. And that was that was the only one. And, and, and in, other than that it was pretty much local radio, but you could you could listen to Chicago radio and I just felt so uh, in touch with the rest of the country that way. Well, how old were you when you uh, became interested in the media itself? I many moons ago, I know that it was I, a late bloomer. Late bloomer um, yeah. you, you go through high school. I, I would equate it to to going to to something like uh, uh, Grable or or Leo. You know, just kind of a, a, a an outside area, a lot of Amish around, but no major uh, cities around. And so, uh, you know, when they would talk about what do you want to do when you graduate from high school, I had no idea. I had absolutely no idea. And so my parents, in desperation. Um, uh, signed me up to do to study engineering oh. at Purdue University. All right. I knew right away that I was not an engineer. Uh, that takes a very special mindset and a very logical, clear, concise thinker of which I am not. So you closed that door. Where'd you go after that? The at about Christmas of that year, uh, one of my uh, roommates down the hall uh, had a radio show, mm. and so he suggested, "Why don't you?" You should try this. You should come over and uh, and I had always loved radio mm. and I loved music and so I did. I took a board shift on the the Purdue Radio Network. You weren't bored, were you? Uh, no, heavens you no. You said board shift. I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't okay, talk enough. Sorry. I I got. Uh, you know, they would put commercials and and specials in there. It's like, no, I want to talk. And so I changed my my major. I decided to go into radio and television. And uh, I transferred to Vincennes University, which is just a lot of hands-on. And mm. I studied radio, TV production. And this whole time, my summer, my, my job, my, my real-time job was in radio. I, I, I worked an evening shift in radio. And I thought that, you know, that might be something that I could do for a very long time. But as I studied radio and TV, I noticed that radio people worked six days a week. Every one oh. of them worked on Saturday. Wow. And uh, television people worked five days a week. So? And so, it, yeah, it's like, you know, 
I'm not the sharpest pencil in the box, but if I have to work six days as opposed to five, and so I, uh, I put together a, uh, a television uh, tape as, as a news photographer. Oh, as a, as just a demo? Strictly, yeah, yeah, just a, strictly a, a news photographer. And um, I wound up at uh, WLFI TV 18 in Lafayette. Mm. And um, How I, long were you there? Oh, about a year and a half. Yeah. And it was just general assignment photography, news, sports, weather, anything that they needed. And I, once again, I thought, you know, I, I can do this. Um, and it wasn't that I that I started talking on TV for a uh, for a living uh, until much much later in life. So um, you did reporting. Reporting? Yeah. Uh, I do a little bit of reporting. I. Um, you took journalism. Yes. Yes. What else? What other topics? Yeah. Subjects. In it's perfect for someone with a short attention span. Something is terribly fascinating for about three hours, and then you move on to something else. That sounds like me. Absolutely. It's a great, for someone with ADD, it's perfect. It almost sounds Irish to me, eh? Absolutely. He's Irish, you know. Just so a little I, bit, just oh a wee bit God. Irish. Just a wee bit of the Blarney coming I from. I sure. Oh, mm -hmm. the Blarney, up to here with the Blarney. <laughs> so uh, when you were uh, in radio, uh, were you a DJ? I, I, back then, you know, small town radio, mm. you did everything. Oh, oh. I, I did, uh, I, I, was a, I was a DJ, I was the news guy, I was the sports guy, Editor. I was the weather guy. We had a, uh, the AM side was live and the FM uh, was automated. It was run by a computer. So I would have to come in in the, in the, uh, the afternoon, about five o'clock, and I would record a, a newscast mm -hmm. and a weather cast right. and a sports cast and then right. put those on tape, on cart, and then plug those into a computer and those would run all night from about six until midnight. And then on the AM side, I was live um, as doing- As opposed to? As opposed to <laughs> dead. <laughs> As opposed to just queuing up, you know, we were on the Cardinal Baseball Network oh. and, and, you know, played a, an interesting mix of music, kind of easy listening and then later country music. And so mm. just learn to, to You said talk. Cardinal. You what? Your tie. I am, um, I grew up a Cincinnati Reds fan, the big red oh. machine in the, in, in the, the 60s and 70s. That's a nice looking tie. Thank you very much. It's, it's very, uh, it's very formal. I feel, I feel good silk? at it. Silk? Oh, I'm sure it's not. I'm, oh, this, is, this has got to be <laughs> nylon. <laughs> oh lordy, you're married. I am married. I got wee ones. Uh, well, they're not wee anymore. No, no more are the wee little ones. My, oh, my, my oldest just graduated from college. Oh, the wee lassie. I sure. Laddie or lassie? Uh, two, two girls, two lassies. Oh, okay. um, you must she, have been surrounded by females. Yes, I, I, even for a while, even the cat was, was a female. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my father had passed away, oh. and uh, her father, my wife's father, had passed away. And for Sorry. a long time, I was the only man in the entire family. Oh my! And so, yeah, you you learn very quickly. To, you are you are walking in the in, in someone else's house, right? And so you you tread lightly on my, eggshells, especially yes. with some. But my my oldest Gress graduated college. Uh, okay. She graduated from uh, Rose Holman. She's a computer. Um, software engineer in Cincinnati, mm. and my youngest is a sophomore at uh, Ball State, and still trying to find her way. She's. Do you think they'll try to uh, go in your footsteps? My youngest one is actually majoring in telecommunications. She doesn't know exactly what she wants to do. Probably more the behind the scenes, perhaps uh, marketing or PR, something like that. But, but not in front. She's not me. Oh. She, she. She's shy. Yes. Ah. Painfully shy. I was shy when I first started five years ago as a TV producer and host mm -hmm. of Patty's Page. Right. I was white knuckled. Ago. <laughs> it's funny how <laughs> pretty soon you don't even think about it. Yeah, all my guests, it's okay, Pat, we let go of the table. <laughs> 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 I was uh, hyperventilating. <laughs> yes. Oh, I know the feeling. But I, I still feeling. do sometimes get. Uh, stage fright before I start. When I do something for the first time, yeah. I'm petrified. Oh. If I if I can do it again, if if it doesn't kill me, right, and I get to do it again, right. I'm usually fine with that. But the first, if I do something for the first time, uh, scares you fritless. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. And um, what was your first assignment when you uh, went into TV? Uh oh. I, I uh, no, I, I I showed up for work mm -hmm. at Channel 18 in Lafayette, 
And uh, I showed up in my, 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 my light blue Plymouth Volari. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had everything that I owned in the car with me. I had my, my laundry, uh -oh. my stereo. Uh -oh. uh, the, the two most important things that, uh, that a young man can have is your laundry and your stereo. And if you absolutely have to, you can do without the laundry, but you need your stereo. <laughs> and so I walked in and I introduced myself and I, I filled out a little bit of paperwork and they said, um, we need you to go down to Purdue University and you're going to interview an official um, from Purdue University about enrollment at Purdue University. And so they, they handed me a camera. Mm -hmm. And I, I, fortunately, I had worked with this type of camera before. Okay. So I had a fighting chance. Right. I got my camera, got the recorder, got the microphone, some batteries, some tapes. They gave me a reporter, Mary Beth Wenger. I remember her. Oh. They did not have a car for me to drive. Lovely. They did not have a news vehicle. So we got into my car. Once again, remember then everything that I own is in the back seat. And how embarrassing! Uh, yeah, we 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 kind of got in, and I mean, I had never. It was the first time I'd met this girl. It was the first time I'd met any of them, and she kind of turned around and she looked at my back seat, just mm -hmm. loaded with laundry. And she's, you know, you you, you kind of learn to roll with, with the punches. punches, and so she just kind of laughed and said, "Laundry, huh? Yep." And we went, and we went to the Bursar's office at Purdue University, and uh, we interviewed uh, someone from the Bursar's office about yeah. enrollment at Purdue. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, you know, once again, after you do that, after you have just been thrown to the wolves, <laughs> you find out, oh, the wolves aren't so bad. I can handle uh, yeah. that. You can handle I that. I can do that. You can handle it. Oh, my goodness. Um, how long, ha when did you first uh, start working for a, no, WPTA 21 mm -hmm. Alive? I came what here you? in, um, in, in June of, of, of uh, 1981, um, I was working in Lafayette, right. and I was uh, I was sent to Notre Dame University where uh, President Ronald Reagan was giving the commencement speech. Oh. So that would have been May of, of, of 1981, and I met uh, a guy that uh, had applied at Channel 18 in Lafayette, and I remembered him, and he and I were just kind of talking, and he said, uh, uh, we have an opening. In, in, in Fort Wayne, maybe you should apply. Mm. And so uh, I sent a resume and uh, I was, heavens to Betsy, I, w I was hired. And so I came here in June of 1981. Who hired you? His you name is Bill Schneider. Oh, I've heard He's still that. at the station. The is man he? that hired me mm. is still at is the he station. Is he retired or? He is our, uh, this is just crazy talk. He's, he's older than I am, but he's our computer guy. Uh, computers are, I don't, I don't do computers. I just, it, it's a foreign language. It's like trying to learn I'm Chinese underwater. I'm stuck to Facebook all the time. Yeah, yeah, Facebook is the most advanced computer thing that oh, I can do. Merciful heavens. Um, and so he, um, he, the guy that hired me is actually still there. And um, uh, the only person in the newsroom that has been there longer than me in the newsroom is Dean Pantazzi, who's been doing sports uh, since, I think, 1978. I want to say so. What is he doing now? It's the same. He, he's still our sports guy. Holy Mac Yes, Dean, he and oh, I. Oh, yeah, I remember him, mustache. Yes, yes. Oh, yes, I remember. The Taz. The Taz. The Taz. That's a good name. Absolutely. He's Greek. He's not he's Irish, Greek. though. He's all right. He'll do all right. What did you do when you first start, started there? Were you reporting or doing? I, I was strictly a news photographer. I was very happy being behind the camera and taking the pictures. And I liked the idea of being able to tell a story with pictures. Mm. And so, um, and I, I was very happy just being behind the scenes. You never narrated some of this? Uh, at that time, no. Um, and at, at that time, um, yeah, all, all news crews were two and sometimes three people. Yeah. And uh, so I was, I was content just being uh, the, 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 the cameraman. And, um, They're cutting back now. Uh, the, the reporter is also the camera person. Everyone has to be able to do at least two jobs, sometimes three. And so you've got to be able to drive to the, the location, get your camera out, you take the pictures, you gather the information, you, you do the interviews, you then bring it all back, you edit it together. Oh, wow. And then in, in the case of the, uh, the noon show, a lot of times I will then get on the computer, which is hand-to-hand -hand combat, and I write the news stories for Linda at noon. And then uh, in the morning show, um, yeah, I Yeah, you're with the morning show. How yes. long have you been with them? I've been on the morning show since 19, I'll say, uh, no, no, about, two, about 2000, 2001, something like that. And uh, that was just a, a personal choice. They had added the morning show photographer to add a, 
just an element of contact with the community. He'd go out and just take pictures of downtown. And if it was raining, we'd, we'd see rain. If it was snowing, we'd see snow. If it oh, was yeah. windy. And uh, <clears throat> once again, telling a story with right. pictures. Right. And I was at a, uh, an apartment fire oh. uh, early one morning. Fortunately, no one injured. Okay. But uh, at that point, uh, Victor Locke was our morning assignment or a morning uh, anchor right. and Victor was a very uh, strong personality and he was very serious and he said Jeff you know why don't you just put a microphone on there and just narrate what you see just stand there and just tell us what you see and so I did I held the microphone up and I took the camera oh, okay over there that's pump mom number one that's the one from downtown and you can see the ladders that go up there and you can see that the firemen are coming out and there are hoses and all that and when we got done Victor said that was great that was wonderful. I felt like I was right there on the scene. And so as that progressed, I talked Evolved. more and yeah. more yeah. Uh, to the chagrin and lamentation of a lot of people. Yes, they let me talk. And I am deeply sorry for that. No, no, we love it when, when, we, when you uh, do interviewing and that and you come out with these little Irish things, you know. I think it's just spiffy, you know. Well, thank you. It's thank smashing. You. It's, it's fun. It, it, everyone gets the joke. I'm... I'm not a polished TV anchor. I don't come into work wearing but a But you three do well. But um, it's 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 almost just like I'm I'm a street guy. Yeah, you know, I'm just I'm just a guy who happens to be out there. And so when I when I tell stories or if I report the news or if I talk to someone, it's just I try to ask the kind of questions that anyone might ask. Yeah. And uh, people are fine with that. People get that. There's there's a level of of comfort with that. They hold me, I think, to a, a, a lower level. They don't expect me to wear the the, the, the hundred dollar suit or the three hundred dollar. I'm dating myself. Hundred dollars used to be a lot of money. Not anymore. And uh. they, they, I wore a tie for you, Patty. I did this, <laughs> but I don't normally wear a tie. And they're and they're good with that. I told I them. I love you know, it. You're I'm, looking good. I'm going to wear blue jeans and I'm going to wear a baseball cap and I'm not going to wear a tie. And you just get what you get. And they said. We're fine with that. What hours do you have? I when, when you start early, what time do you start? I clock in at 4.30 in the morning yeah. and uh, check the morning computer to see what's going on. And then I head right out into the live truck. And uh, most mornings, that might just be some a busy uh, street corner somewhere talking yeah. about the traffic of the day. If there's a, a, a lane closure or a car accident or a big fire or something, oh, I'll yeah. go out to that. But there's also... Um, like for instance, uh, this week uh, the the folks from uh, Disney on Ice oh. are going to be coming in, and we're going to be promoting, promoting their show. And the amazing thing about Disney on Ice is you know, anything Disney, they do it right. They bring in a full production crew right. at five o'clock in the morning, and they light the ice, and they have a dozen skaters, mm -hmm. and they have audio people, and lighting people, and technicians, and they put on a show just for us. Now they're advertising; they're trying to sell tickets. But uh, they drag in, I don't know, 20 people, 20 at, people. at 5 o'clock in the morning to wow. put on a Disney skating show. So what time do you have to get up there? Um, I, I'll get there. I'll get out there at a shortly after 5, and uh, I'll be out there for a couple hours. And then after that, after 7 o'clock, um, it's just whatever the news of the day is. Once again, you know, a, a car wreck, a fire, a, a news conference. So you're busy all day. When, when is your quitting time? Busy all day, and I'm done, oh, about 1 o'clock. Then you can go home. Which is not bad. In the summer, especially, once the weather warms up, oh. and, you know, I'm, I'm home at 1 o'clock, and I could, if, if golf weren't the most frustrating thing I've ever done in my life, I could play golf if I wanted to. <laughs> you know, I can, I can ride my bicycle. I can do things in the outside, and I've got all afternoon. My mm -hmm. sacrifice is that I go to bed at 7.30, and so I do not have an evening life. Yeah. I, don't, oh. I don't get to watch. How about weekends? I mean, you can be able to have evening Weekends life. are strange because I can't, I can't sleep in too oh. much. I'm so used to getting up at like 3.15 in the morning. Right. I get up at that time. Cats wake me up. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just my one. Yeah, we have one cat, and he he loves me, and he comes and talks to and me. And then he comes to say, "Where is my breakfast?" Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. There's no we snooze alarm. We just have the one, <laughs> but there's no snooze alarm mm -mm. on a, on a hungry cat. Do they come up and touch your nose? Yes. Say, "Excuse me, you're you're, you're too asleep, a little bit too long for me, and I'm hungry." Mine did that just this morning. Did. He? But uh, I can't sleep in on a on a Saturday Sunday, and I don't dare sleep in on a Sunday. Right. Because I have to go to bed at 7.30. And so oh. if I slept in till 8 or 9 o'clock, I get could sleep. not get to sleep Sunday night, which just 
you don't get a good night's sleep, you feel awful on Monday morning, and your week is off to a roaring start by feeling like you got hit by a truck on Monday morning. And you got to look bright and, and uh, yeah. active. Well, yeah. try to anyways. <laughs> you do the best you can. Oh, my goodness. This is turning into a real, real great show. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for coming on. This is fun. Um, so um, what do you see for yourself in the future at uh, 21 Alive? When I came to Fort Wayne, I had the idea that I wanted to, to play the, the media game. You, you, you market hop. You start in, uh, in, in a Lafayette, which is a small market, and then you move into Fort Wayne, which is a little bit bigger market, and then you maybe go to Dayton or Louisville or something like that, which is a slightly bigger market. And when I came here, my target market was probably Nashville. Uh, I thought that I would really like to live in Nashville. But a um, funny thing happens, you meet someone, you get married, you buy yeah. a house, you have kids, they go to school, and pretty soon it's, uh, it's, I don't want to uproot. I don't want to uproot my kids. It became, um, it became important to me to get my kids through the same school system, the same set of friends, mm -hmm. get them into school, get them, stabilized. Get them out of school, mm -hmm. and, and not turn their life upside down. And, and what, I, what I realized was that just a, a basic general assignment news photographer, the job is absolutely no different whether you're in Fort Wayne or Indianapolis or Cincinnati or Chicago or New York. It doesn't matter. The basic job, it's it's just it, it's almost like being in radio. It mm. doesn't. You're in a studio, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter where that studio is. You're doing the same thing. Sure, you're talking to more people. Yeah. But if the actual job, if you're if you're a, a, a DJ, if you're a radio personality, you're in a studio all day, and that basic part of your job does not change. And that was the thing with news, uh, news photographers. I had an opportunity to go to Indianapolis. I, I had job offers from Louisville and Cincinnati and places like that. And it was for almost the same money, in some cases less money, oh. to, to move to a, a bigger market. And then, of course, you're at the bottom of the seniority level. And Cold so you're and working pole. nights and weekends mm, and yeah. you're getting all the junky stories. Graveyard that no, shift. That no one else wants to cover. And I just realized that I can stay in Fort Wayne mm -hmm. and have a, a really good lifestyle. You know, we have so a, a, a are nice you intermediate or, or senior now? Am I what? Are you intermediate or senior? As, you mean a senior citizen? No, no, no. I mean, <laughs> you're not a rookie anymore at 21 Alive. Oh, I am a dinosaur. All of the kids coming in, we get them right out of college. They are the age of my daughters, uh -oh. my children. Like interns, and, right? Yeah. Hi. And so, um, you know, I, uh, you need a few old fogies around to let them know that, well, this is, this is who this is, and this is the way we do that, and you park over there, and you do this, and I, a, a lot of my job is now teaching you know, these, these people that are coming right out of college, they have a lot of book learning. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times their, 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 their experience, their practical experience is just in a college life. And I, mm -hmm. I try to show them how we do it in the real world. And yeah, I am somewhere between father and grandfather to these kids. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I smack them around a little bit. They uh -oh. just, yeah. Uh, they, they, yeah, they, they, they talk, talk about the old man and I'll just. He's I'll, a tough old bird, eh? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, would you like to go into any other uh, profession as you get older, or when you retire, would you? Uh... Well, once my youngest gets out of college, all bets are off. That mm -hmm. is really the next great goal. I need a couple more years, yeah. get my daughter through school, right. get her student loans paid off. Right. And um, I... I I don't really see myself, I could see myself maybe moving into something where I don't get snowed on or rained on oh, every morning, something like that, more of an, ins an indoor job, yeah. but I might get bored. I, I have a, you have to keep occupied, yeah. especially, especially when you're dealing with TV and radio. You're always constantly doing something. I can't see myself retiring. I'm going on 63 this May. I would love to get bored. I, yeah, mm -hmm. I would. I would. I, I could see Once the idea. Once in a while, get bored. Uh, yeah, yeah. Get 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 retired. Get right. things paid off, and yeah. then take some time and get really bored, and then say, oh, I "Okay, do now something. what do I want to do? Something fun. I'd like get to get a do. rest first, and then say, okay. Do something I believe in. The world is at your feet. I would love to. I I have always loved 
television news. I really genuinely believed that um, television news shapes the way people think. You know, we can, what we say on the news affects how people vote. Mm. And mm. and so uh, you know we we got a lot of influence. Yes, absolutely. And you need to take that seriously. Um, that's one of the things that you teach the, the the new kids when they come into the business. Is when you say something, it's not just disappearing in the atmosphere. People no. are hearing that. You have to be careful. Absolutely. Be responsible. Well, listen, it's going on two minutes until the end of the show. Oh, my stars! I have to. That have just you on. flew by. Ah, I got too many questions. I could do this all day. I got too many questions for him. Now it's almost over. The answer to all of them is maybe. Maybe. Yes. Oh. Every question you ask me from now on, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. That's what I normally say to Bob. Maybe. 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 We'll see. So what are you going to do? Uh, what are you covering tomorrow? Uh, t tomorrow, you know what? Once again, the beauty of, of having know. ADD, not a clue. Not a clue. I, I will come in tomorrow morning, 4.30. I will log on to my computer, mm -hmm. and someone will tell me where to go what and how to get there. your assignment is. Yeah. I will probably stand, and if it's still raining, I'll stand in the rain. I hope not. Seeing in the rain. Anyways, I'd like to thank everybody, you, Jeff Bowman, for thank coming you. on my fun. show. Uh, this is fun. I, I should do this more often with him and have more of your colleagues with me. Thank you for coming onto my show. Quite welcome. And thank you, audience, for tuning in. I'll see you next week. This is Patty Hunter of Patty's Page. Good day, eh? So until